So we're going to go ahead and start. Um, this week has been a very fun and interesting week for me. I think I've been noticing just we're always in a moment of transition with life. That is just something that we always know. But sometimes the transitions feel a little bit more welcome than they do at other points. And it seems that when we're in those moments of transition, and they're not ones that we we're super excited about, our minds can start to race, our bodies can start to race, our hearts can start to clench up. And the thing that I've noticed that's been the most helpful this week in terms of being with it is like a mantra I taught you guys years ago. It's a mantra I learned from Lizzie Lasseter, but it's been very helpful. So we're gonna work with that this week. And it basically just allows us to take whatever situation in life and to just become still to it, to be present, to see what's going on. And then once we're in that shape, in that situation, in that lived experience, our next thing is to be quiet. We have to be quiet or shut the F up because our minds will start to talk to us about what should have been done, what shouldn't have been done, wish, wishing and hoping that things were different. And so once we can be quiet, that allows us to then become still. And the stillness I think is really hard. <laughs> <laughs> because it requires that we sort of let go of wishing again that things were other than they are. Um, but once we can do that, that opens up the possibility to again pay attention to what's going on. And I notice that for me, once I have become quiet and then once I've allowed myself to become still, there's still some tension. And so then we have to invite ourselves to do less. There's still a bit of control, there's still a bit of resistance. And how can I let go? And then it brings us to the granddaddy of them all of how can I trust more? So that's what we're going to get to by the time we get to the end of the practice is just be quiet, be still, do less, and trust more. The idea being that whatever is happening in whatever form, I do think is genuinely there to help us. Whether or not we see that at the time is really kind of up to us. Um, sometimes I just don't like change and I would rather not do anything involved with it. Like, yep, you stay over there. I'm gonna stay right here. I know how this works. Um, but I'm trying to invite myself to trust more in the process of life as it's unfolding. And this has been very helpful for me. So since a number of us have expressed low back stuff, I want you to start on your abdomen in the krasana. Mommy to be, we're gonna sit up. And what we're gonna start with is just allowing ourselves to start to do some diaphragmatic breathing. So those that are in heads up seven up, you're just gonna cross either your forearms or your wrists underneath your forehead, extend your legs long, draw the big toes to touch and let the heels either open wide or you can walk your feet wide and turn the toes in the heels out. If we are seated, we're gonna bring one hand to our belly and one hand to our heart. And the first thing that we're going to do is I want you to just allow yourself to come into this shape. So. Soften the gaze, close the eyes. And we're gonna pay very much attention to what's happening in our belly. So for the next three to five breaths, I want you to just breathe into your abdomen. And we're hoping to innervate our vagus nerve. So our vagus nerve is that fun, long cranial nerve that apparently runs from the crown all the way down through all of the viscera. And what we're doing now is with having attention coming into the belly and into that nerve plexus that exists in the belly, we're starting to bring a little bit more awareness there. Now, as you're here for the next, bless you, two to three breath cycles, we're gonna bring more awareness to the smoothness of our breath. And I want you to see if you can even out the breath. So the inhalation is smooth and continuous all the way from beginning to end. And then the exhalation becomes smooth and continuous from beginning to end. And as you continue on this, you'll continue to smooth out the breath. And the next thing I'd like you to notice is notice the sound of your breath. So you might have a slight ujjayi contraction. You might just be breathing internally, but we're going to just allow ourselves to again, have that smooth and continuous breath in, smooth and continuous breath out. And then you're noticing the sound of that breath. 
Is that the same sound beginning to end? Are there any hiccups, any jumps, any bumps? And for our last three breath cycles here, I want you to see if you can make that continuous from beginning to end, meaning there's no stop between the inhalation and the exhalation. There's no hiccups between the top of the inhalation and the bottom of the inhalation, top of the exhalation, bottom of the exhalation. And as we continue to breathe here, the last thing to do is bring awareness now to your low back. So I've been encouraging you to breathe into the belly. And as you breathe into the belly, you can also start to breathe into your low back. So our low back is where our kidneys and our adrenals live. And when things happen, when transitions occur in life, these can often get fatigued. So for the last breath cycle here, you're just breathing into the belly and breathing into the low back, into those kidneys and those adrenals. Awesome. At the end of your exhalation, those that are on hands and knees will gently lift your head. You'll plant your hands underneath your shoulders and you'll come up to hands and knees. And those that are seated, you'll make your way forward to hands and knees. And then the first thing that we wanna do is once you have your hands underneath the shoulders, knees underneath your hips, you're just gonna take a few cats and cows. And for this first set, I want you to do the laziest cat and cow you've ever thought about. So think of just dropping your spine between your limbs and then think of pulling your spine up away from your limbs. And again, you're just paying attention to what it feels like to breathe. You're dropping the spine as you inhale and you're lifting the spine as you exhale. Great, and we're gonna to start to add on. As you exhale, I want you to draw the low belly in and up and then pull it up towards your face. And then as you inhale, I want you to squeeze your low back between the kidneys and the adrenals. So those in person, I did touch you in this spot. So I want you to squeeze where you remember my hand going. Yep. And when you exhale, you're round, drawing the belly in and up. And then you inhale and you squeeze here, yep and then exhale. And you've just got three more just like that. And you'll notice that as you continue to do this, especially as you squeeze and you pull the belly in and up, you might start to feel your pelvic floor tone. And so that's something we're gonna come back to in a little bit. But this just starts to contain and harness our energy so we can direct it. Awesome, at the end of your next exhalation, you're just gonna press back to a child's pose and just take a moment to breathe. With your belly on your thighs, I want you to push your belly down into your thighs. If your legs are a little bit wider, you're just going to breathe wide into your rib cage. And you've just got two breath cycles here. No matter what's happening, we can allow ourselves first and foremost to become quiet, to allow the mind, the chatter to settle so that we can hear the message of our heart, the message of life. Awesome sauce. Next in breath, let's go ahead and come forward, hands and knees. And then as you exhale, curl the toes under, lift the hips high, downward facing dog. Awesome. When you get there, I want you to slowly bend your knees and pedal the feet out however you'd like. But again, you're just paying very close attention to how this is feeling in the breath, how this is feeling in the body. Great. We've got two more breath cycles here. Awesome. At the end of your next exhalation, you'll go ahead and come to stillness. And then inhale, lower your knees down to the mat and have a seat on a block. This is just to find our breath before we move on. All right. Perfect. So let's go ahead and inhale, sweep your arms up and overhead. Exhale, cactus your elbows, drawing your hands down towards the floor. And you've just got two more of those. Inhale, arms sweep up. Exhale, bend the elbows, squeeze the shoulders onto the back. Yep. Last one, inhale, arms sweep up. Exhale, cactus the elbows, squeeze the shoulder blades on the back, hug the elbows towards each other, fingers touch the floor. Great, let's add on. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Exhale, twist towards the right. Right hand comes back, left arm comes forward. Inhale, come back up. Exhale, twist to the left, left hand forward or left hand back, right arm forward. Inhale, come back up. 
and exhale cactus the arms alongside your hips back to the floor. Great. We'll do that two more times on your own. So as you take this whole series, you're twisting first to the right, and then you're inhaling, coming back through center and twisting to the left. And you're just paying attention to what it feels like to be in your breath. A lot of times it feels like we can't be still because we're in a motion of trying to compare ourselves to where we think we ought to be, where we think others might be, how we think life should be. And so we're just allowing ourselves to pay attention to where we actually are. Awesome. And then after you come back to center this last time, go ahead and lower the arms down. We'll go ahead and fold forward at your hips, crawl forward onto hands and knees and start to make your way back to downward facing dog. And you're just going to take a two or three breath cycles here. And again, see if you can still maintain that ujjayi pranayama. So we just cultivated it while we were moving and see if you can just maintain that. Got one more breath cycle here. And then at the end of your next exhalation, start to bend your knees and walk your feet towards your face. When you get towards the top of your space, take a moment to pause there, separate your feet as much as you need to. And then let's go ahead and inhale halfway. Bring your hands to the fronts of your shins, shift your weight forward slightly so the weight's even on the balls of the feet and the heels. Push your shins into your fingers, your fingers back into your shins, and bend your knees as much as you need to to keep your low back long. Yep. And then from here, let's bring your hands to your hips. And then inhale slowly, slowly, slowly come up. Okay, take a moment to hold on to your hips, push your hips down. Push your feet down, lift your heart and sternum up. Okay, this is kind of esoteric, but I really like this. So we're gonna do this. You've got two options. You can put a block on its highest setting or sorry, narrowest setting in between your upper inner thighs. You might also take your blanket. It felt really nice to have something there. So you choose whichever one you'd like, but you're gonna put it in between your legs. All right, and then I want you to walk your feet in so that they're underneath your hip bones and you're gonna draw the weight forward into the balls of your feet and back into the heel so that it's even. Now I want you to squeeze whatever between your thighs for dear life. Like you're gonna crush that like a Jane Fonda thigh master. I don't know. I think you're gonna inhale and lengthen the tailbone down. Hands will come to your hips. Now we're gonna bend our knees and I want you to focus again on that belly breathing. So you're gonna inhale and breathe into the belly. And then exhale, squeeze what's ever between your thighs and draw your pelvic floor up. Inhale, breathe into the belly, breathe into the low back. Exhale, squeeze what's between your thighs and draw it up. Now we're just gonna be here for about five more breath cycles. So you're inhaling, breathing into that belly. As you exhale, squeeze your legs and then hug the pelvic floor up. And what it feels like with that pelvic floor hugging up, it's almost like it's four elevators closing or four doors. So you come in right to left, you come front to back and you pull all that crap straight up. Yep. And as we're here for these last two breath cycles, you're still squeezing between those legs. You're still breathing into your back and into your belly every time you inhale. Yep. And for the last five breaths that we're gonna be here, I know you can cactus the arms if you'd like. You can reach the arms up and overhead, but the, the impetus is to keep the energy low. So when life transitions happen, we can feel uprooted. We can feel like everything becomes frenetic. But if you keep breathing into that abdomen and you keep breathing into that low back, and then every time you exhale, you push down into those feet, you squeeze those thighs, you pull that pelvic floor up. It gives you the stability to be grounded in whatever's happening. We're allowing ourselves to be quiet, to be still. You got two more breath cycles. Keep breathing into that belly. Keep sitting low in your legs, hugging everything in. Yep. Nice job. On your next exhale, go ahead and lower the arms. Stand tall and just take a moment to notice the energy. Yep. Let's go ahead and remove whatever's between our thighs. Fold forward at your hips and then slowly just make your way to downward facing dog. 
And when we get to downward facing dog, we're gonna pause and we're gonna focus here. So I just had you focus a lot on your abdomen. So once you get to downward facing dog, I want you to again, breathe into your belly, breathe into your low back, and then exhale, hug the right and the left sides of the pelvis together, the front and the back sides of the pelvis together. And you're just taking three breaths. So the belly's in the, the, the breath's in the belly and in the low back every time you inhale. And then you exhale from the pelvic floor up. And you're noticing that this gives you a little bit more heat. It gives you a little bit more energy. It's activating, that looks good, Roberta. It's activating our third chakra, our sense of will, our strength, our determination to be present in whatever life happens to unfold for us. Next inhale, let's go ahead and come forward. Plank pose. Awesome sauce. And once we find ourselves in plank, again, you're gonna push the hands apart, push the hands down, and then your impetus comes back or your awareness comes back to the breath in the belly. So you inhale, breathe into the belly and into the low back, yep. You exhale, you hug the right and the left sides of the pelvis together, the front and the back of the pelvis together, and you pull all that crap up, yep. We got two more, big breaths, breathing into the belly. Hello, belly, hello, pelvic floor. And so from a tantric perspective, what this is doing, is this, this is containing our energy. This is allowing us to have our strength. Nice job. On your next in-breath, you can shift your weight forward and come to a cobra or an up dog. And then as you exhale, you'll make your way back to a downward facing dog and you'll just pause and you'll just breathe and you'll notice what you notice. You'll notice what you notice. And I want you to keep coming back to breathing into the abdomen, into the belly. We have that nerve plexus that has 30,000 nerves. It's as much as a cat's brain, apparently. I know I was surprised when I heard that. I was like, all right. So we're going to see how that just works with us and what that enables us to do. All right. Next in breath, let's go ahead and sweep our right leg up and back. As you exhale, step that right foot forward between your hands. Awesome sauce. Once you get there, bring your hands to your blocks if you'd like. Tuck the back toes under, straighten the back leg long. And then you'll inhale, reach your heart and sternum forward. And you'll exhale, just straighten that front leg long. And you've just got four sets of these. And as you're coming in and out of this runner's lunge, you're just paying attention to how this feels in the body. Can you still keep your awareness in the breath? Can you still keep your mind in the belly in the breath? Yep. And after you've done four sets and that front leg is straight, you will stay there and pause and breathe for three breath cycles. Awesome. And now once you're there, let's all draw that outer right hip straight back. Press from your right heel or rather your right hip towards your right big toe. And then let's see if we can reach our heart and sternum forward to lengthen the spine. So it almost feels like you need to sort of send your pubic bone back just a bit. Some of you will peel the sole of the right foot up and away from the floor. Some of you will leave it just as it is, but you're pausing and you're breathing. Nice work, guys. Next in breath, shift your weight forward. As you exhale, plant the palms, step back, downward facing dog. Great. Last time, let's inhale, come forward into plank pose. And then exhale, stay here. And we're gonna just do three of those breaths that we did before. So you're inhaling, breathing into your belly, into your low back, yep. Exhale, hugging the right, the left, the front, the back together, yep. Two more, big breaths. Yep, or the knees if you'd like. And then reach your spine forward so that you can keep all of that straight. It'll still, yep, it'll still get the core, yep. And then it'll give you the ability to work this. Huh, does that feel different? Yeah. Okay. Awesome, after you've done three, you can inhale, shift the weight forward, come to an up dog or cobra, and then exhale back to downward facing dog. And it's just paying attention, how is the breath moving? So when we come into either an up dog or a cobra, that's a heart opening. When we go back into a downward facing dog or a child's pose, that's more of a grounding shape. So you figure out and you know Notice which one feels best to you. Awesome. And you just got one more breath cycle here. So breathing into belly and low back, and then exhaling, hugging right, left, front, back of pelvis together. Yep. Great. Next in breath, let's switch sides. Inhale, sweep your left leg up and back. As you exhale, step the left foot forward between your hands. Take your time to get there. 
bring your hands onto blocks. And then as you did before, inhale, shifting your weight forward, heart looking for it. Exhale, shifting the weight back, straightening that front leg. And you've got four of these. And you're just paying attention. Where does the body feel open? Where does it want to go? Where is this side its own unique entity? Can you be quiet and allow it to reveal itself? Can you be still and allow it to tell you how it wants to move? And then can we do a little bit less in terms of trying to make it like the other side? And then after you've done four sets, you'll pause with both legs straight, your pelvis back, walk the blocks back so they're underneath your shoulders or wherever is appropriate for you. And then you wanna see if you can make your spine as long as possible. Yep, yep, and melt here, but reach your sternum forward. I know that's crazy as heck. There we go. And then some of you will peel the left foot up off the floor. Some of you will not. Some of you will lift up through that inner right thigh even more as you draw that outer left hip back. And you're just pausing and you're breathing. Great. Next in breath, shift your weight forward, bend your knees, plant your palms, step yourself back, downward facing dog. You can choose to hang out there or cycle through an up dog or cobra, it's all up to you, but you're paying attention to what feels best to you. Yep. Great. And then once you get back to downward facing dog, come back to that breathing in the abdomen. So we wanna focus on this today because when we get really established here, it allows us to accomplish a crap ton of things. So get really established in that belly breathing, almost as though you're pushing your belly towards your thighs, you're drawing your thighs away from your belly, you're drawing the backs of the legs away from the fronts of the thighs. Great, let's add on. Inhale, sweep your right leg up and back. As you exhale, step the right foot quietly between your hands, pause. Spin your back foot to the floor and come up for warrior two. Now this is a psych out because you're not gonna stay there very long. So come all the way up to warrior two. Let's bring our hands to our hips and you're gonna start to turn yourself all the way back to warrior one. So you're gonna have to adjust that back foot, but see if you can still stay long in your stance. And then you'll bend into that front knee. You'll press into the outside edge of that back foot and all that stuff we did on the belly, you're gonna do again. So I want you to inhale, breathe into your low belly, breathe into your low back. As you exhale, hug the outer edges of the pelvis together, right, left, front, back. And you've got three of those. Some of you will keep your hands as they are. Some of you will reach your arms up and overhead, but your impetus is to still focus on that belly. So you're breathing front, back, belly, and then exhale, pelvic floor, right, left, front, back, pull up. Yep, and you're just pausing and you're breathing and you're noticing what you notice, pressing onto knife edge, toning inner left thigh, lifting up, yep, awesome. On your next exhale, go ahead and fold forward at your hips, hands come back to those blocks, straighten your front leg long, and now we're in pyramid pose proper. And then let's pause here, again, drawing that outer right hip back, lifting up through that inner left thigh and then pushing down into that right big toe mound. Some of you will turn your blocks up a higher height in order to make your spine as parallel to the floor as possible. And then some of you will stay right here. Some of you might bring your right hand to your right hip, pull that right hip back, reach your heart and sternum forward and maybe rotate towards the right. But you're paying attention to what's happening in the breath. Paying attention to what's happening in the breath. And by breath, I mean what's happening in the belly. So you're breathing into the belly, you're breathing into the low back, and then you're exhaling, hugging everything together in the pelvic floor. Great. On your next in breath, gently unwind. As you exhale, plant the palms, bend the knees, step back, downward facing dog. You might cycle through, you might not, but again, you're paying attention to what allows you to become quiet, what allows you to become still, what allows you to do less, and what allows you to trust more. Yep, one more breath cycle here. Great, let's go ahead and add on. Inhale, sweep your left leg up and back. As you exhale, quietly step that foot between your hands. Once you're there, take a moment to spin the back foot down, and we're gonna come up for a warrior two psych out. And so it really feels like a psych out because I wanna see how long you can stay in your warrior two 
while just taking the little adjustments to come to warrior one. So a lot of times our warrior one, that pose that we take when we're going into battle with life becomes a lot shorter than it needs to be. And then once you feel like you're at as long of a stance as you can be, great. Now I want you to breathe into your belly, breathe into your low back. Every exhale, draw the right, the left, the front, the back of the pubic bone, pelvic floor area together and then up. Some of you will stay right there. Some of you will reach your arms up and overhead and maybe you'll join the palms, maybe you won't. But every in breath, breathe into belly, breathe into low back. And then every exhale, you're hugging the pelvic floor up to contain your energy to support your knowing, your strength. You got one more breath cycle here. Breathe into my hand. Yeah. There you go, Roberta, yep. As you breathe in, this expands and your belly expands. Yeah, great. Next exhalation, fold forward at your hips. Hands come to blocks or floor. Straighten that front leg long. And you'll notice that now we're in a really long pyramid pose. So some of us, this will work. Some of us, you might wanna walk that back foot in just a little bit. But we're all gonna see if we can press from our left sit bone to our left big toe, draw that outer left hip back, and lift that inner right thigh up. From there, reach your heart and sternum forward so the spine is parallel-ish to the floor. And then some of you will stay right here. Some of you will draw that left hand to the left hip. And then we'll start to rotate towards the left. But before we do that, let's see if we can push down so if you want to do that, you push down through the right hand, lifting up through the right armpit, and then you start to rotate from there towards the left. Yeah. And then just as always, that back is stable and we're breathing into the belly and we're breathing into the low back every time you inhale. Yep. And then the exhale hugs the right, the left, the front, the back of the pubic bone, pelvic floor together. Yep. And you've got two more breath cycles here. Slight bend in front knee, yep. Awesome. On your next in-breath, gently unwind. As you exhale, plant the palms, step yourself back, downward facing dog, cycle through or not, your choice. But again, just notice what you notice. Notice what you notice. How can you still continue to breathe in that abdomen? That's the most important part for today. Oh, that looks good, Barbara. Okay. All right, let's add on. Next in breath, shift your right leg up and back. As you exhale, step that right foot quietly between your hands. As you're ready, spin the back foot to the floor and come up for warrior two this time. Great, and once you find yourself at warrior two, I want you to again, come back to that belly breathing, that low back breathing, the pelvic floor. So we're seeing what that feels like. Yep, we're bending into the front knee as best as we can. And then keeping all of that, so let's go ahead and straighten your front leg long. Bring your right hand to the inside edge of your right palm, palm, sorry, right thigh, palm faces forward. And then you're going to start to slide that right hand down until it touches maybe your right big toe, maybe a block, maybe the floor. Yep. And for kicks and giggles, let's just draw our left hand to our left hip for a moment. I want you to breathe into your belly and I want you to breathe into your low back. And then every exhale, you draw the right, the left, the front, the back of the pelvis together. And you've just got two more like that. From here, you might keep the hand on the hip. You might reach that left hand up. You might take a half bind behind you, but you're choosing and we're reaching out through the feet. We're breathing into the belly. We're reaching forward through the chest and through the heart. Awesome. Last breath cycle here. Great. Next in breath, turn your gaze down to the floor as you exhale, low lunge. Take a moment, step yourself back, downward facing dog and pause. So this one, we're gonna just stay in down dog. And you're just gonna stay in down dog. You're gonna bend your knees as much as you need to. Yep. And then I want you to, again, breathe into your belly, breathe into your low back. This time I want you to lift your kneecaps up as much as you can and draw the fronts of your thighs away from you. Send the backs of your thighs away from you and then reach your sit bones down to your heels. Great. Awesome sauce. Let's go ahead and try the other side. Inhale, sweep your left leg up and back. As you exhale, step that foot quietly between your hands. 
Spin the back foot down and bring yourself up to Virabhadrasana to warrior two. And just as you did on the first side, you've got a couple breaths. Establish yourself in your warrior two. Yep, and then once you're there, your awareness comes to the belly, comes to the breath. So you're breathing into the low belly, you're breathing into the low back every time you inhale. So you can almost feel like just when you were laying on the floor, some of us, when you pushed your belly down into the floor, the low back went back. And then as you exhale, you're drawing front, back, right, left, cubic bone, all that comes together and then up. Awesome. On your next in-breath, straighten your front leg long. Bring the left hand to the inside of the left thigh, palm faces forward. Take a big breath in. And then as you exhale, you'll start to slide that hand down your leg. Maybe the fingertips come to the floor. Maybe they come to the shin. Maybe they come to a block. Maybe that right hand comes to the right hip. But you're going to just take a moment to, again, awareness is in the belly and it's in the breath. Or rather, the awareness is in the belly and the breath is in the belly too. So you're just pausing in your breathing. Can you breathe into the belly, into the low back? And then every exhale, hug front, back, right, left, pubic bone together. Great, last breath cycle here. See if the heart can still reach forward. Yep. And it almost feels like if the arm is up, it almost feels like you're leaning back into gravity. Yeah. On your next in-breath, turn your gaze down to the floor. Come to a low lunge as you exhale, step yourself back, downward facing dog. Three breaths. You might choose to hang out in child's pose if you'd like, but three breaths. And then can I get a heads up? Does that make sense what I'm saying about front, left, or, okay. Do you feel anything happening? Maybe, okay. So I got a yes and a maybe, okay. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and add on. Inhale, sweep your right leg up and back. As you exhale, step that right foot quietly between your hands. Cool. Highly encourage you to put your hands on your blocks, but you do whatever the heck happens to work for you. You're gonna inhale, look forward, walk your blocks forward, shift your weight forward, float that back leg up and away from the floor. Hooray. Now, cool, let's pause. We wanna make sure that back foot is active so you're kicking back as much as you can. You're breathing into your abdomen as much as you can. You're lifting through that inner left thigh as the outer left hip drops down. Some of you will stay right here. Some of you will bring that right hand to your right hip. Some of you will then reach your spine forward parallel-ish to the floor. And then some of you will start to rotate your right shoulder on top of your left. And notice that if you're doing that, you're kicking back through that left foot as much as you can. Yep, you're lifting through that inner left thigh quite a bit revolved half moon variation. Awesome sauce. On your next exhale, go ahead and lower both hands back down, bend the front knee, step yourself back, and you might just go back to downward facing dog and pause. You might cycle through. You pay attention to what feels good to you. And once you get back to downward facing dog, your awareness is back first and foremost to that belly and the breath. Belly in the breath, belly in the breath. We make a lot of decisions actually from our gut brain. I mean, it's part of our lexicon. It's also part of how we feel good in our life when our stomach is on board with what's going on. And so we're just breathing there, seeing how it's doing. Awesome. Let's go ahead and do the other side. Inhale, just reach your left leg up and back. As you exhale, quietly step that foot between your hands. Pause, hands come to blocks. Start to walk the blocks forward, shift your weight forward, float that right leg parallel-ish to the floor. Great, pause before you go anywhere. Activate that back foot, push back through that right heel, lift the inner right thigh up, draw the outer right hip down. Some of you will stay right here. Some of you will draw that left hand to the left hip. Some of you will then reach your spine forward, parallel-ish to the floor, yep. And then you'll start to rotate, yep, towards the left. Nice, that's looking good, Roberta. And you wanna make sure that you're keeping your weight on that left leg, lifting through that inner right thigh. And then you're breathing into that belly. I know it sounds weird, but the more you can breathe into the belly, it gives you the opportunity to rotate above the spine. Awesome. On your next exhale, you'll lower both hands back to the floor. You'll bend that front knee. You'll step yourself confidently back. 
And then maybe you'll step back to downward facing dog and cycle through. Maybe you'll rest in child's pose. You choose, but you're taking a moment to pause. You're taking a moment to breathe. Taking a moment to pause. You're taking a moment to breathe. Great. And you're just noticing. What do you notice? What do you notice? How's the breath? How's the body? Okay. When you're ready, let's go ahead and inhale. And we'll come forward to hands and knees. And then we'll make our way back to downward facing dog. I had one more thing planned and I'm trying to assess the energy of the room. How are we feeling? One more thing or should we move on? Let's do it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> We're taking a moment, Barbara, to turn on some AC. More AC, Barbara's laughing. Okay, so we're good to go. All right, so let's go back to downward facing talk. Last little thing before we sit down. All right. Next in breath, shift your right leg up and back. As you exhale, quietly slip that foot between your hands. Spin your back foot to the floor and come up for warrior two. Okay, so we all pretty much, I think, know where we're going with this. You're gonna go ahead and lower the right hand to the inside edge of your right thigh. Start to slide it down towards the floor. Sweep your left arm up and over your head. And you'll pause and you'll breathe. Maybe the left arm will be 180 degrees up. Maybe it'll be alongside your ears. But again, we're breathing into the belly. We're breathing into the low back. We're pushing out through the legs and we're hugging the pelvic floor in. Awesome. You got one more breath cycle here. Great. Let's go ahead and bring left hand to left hip. Turn your gaze down to the floor. You might want to bring your hand to a block. You'll start to walk that block forward and outside of your right leg. Shift your back foot in. Shift forward into half moon. And you're going to pause here and you're going to breathe. And you're going to lift through that inner back thigh. Push back through that back heel as best as you can. Yep. And then see if you can stack the left shoulder on top of the right. And then maybe you'll float the top arm up. Nice work, guys. As you're ready, you'll gently bend the front knee. You're good. Step back with the back foot. Come back to warrior two. Yep. Cartwheel the hands down to the floor and cycle yourself back to downward facing dog. Choose to cycle through, choose to not. But again, you're just paying attention. We added a lot of things on together very quickly. How did you respond in that? How did the breath respond? Were you able to stay with it? Did the breath check out? Was there anger? Was there resistance? Did you go with it? Just notice what you notice. Doesn't matter either way. It just matters what you noticed. Okay. Let's go ahead and try that all on the other side. And again, let's pay attention to what we're noticing. Inhale, sweep your left leg up. As you exhale, step the left foot between your hands. Once you get there, you'll spin your right foot to the floor and come up for warrior two. And then again, in warrior two, we'll go just as we did before. So left hand will come to the inside edge of left thigh, palm will face away. You'll start to slide that hand down towards your foot. And then you'll reach your right arm up and overhead. And it might just do 180 degrees like it did the first time. You might draw your palm over your ear. But again, you're paying attention. How is the breath in the belly? How is the breath in the low back? How are you activating the pelvic floor, holding all the energy together in that root center so that it can flower, so that it can flourish? And you've got one more steady breath cycle here. How is the heart staying open in the midst of all of this? Yeah, on your next in-breath, gaze comes down to the floor. You might bring that hand to a block, your left hand, sorry, right hand to your right hip. Start to shift your weight forward. Lift the right leg off the floor. Activate that right leg. So as though you're kicking the wall back. Yeah, nice active legs, guys. And then notice, can you breathe into the belly? Can you maybe stack that right shoulder on top of the left? Maybe the right arm flies up. Maybe it doesn't. Nice job, guys. Lots of stability. As you're ready, you'll bend that left knee. You'll confidently step back to a warrior two. Yeah, nice work. 
And then when you're ready, cartwheel the hands down to the floor, downward facing dog, child's pose. We are done with standing things. Yep, we're done with standing things. And we're gonna meet in child's pose. So you get there however you want. You get there however you want. And you're just pausing and you're breathing. Pausing and you're breathing. And if the knees and shins are together, I want you to push your belly into your thighs and feel that in your low back. If the knees are wider apart, can you widen your ribs out as though they could touch your inner thighs? Great. And you've just got one more breath cycle here. On your next in breath, go ahead and draw your hands back underneath your shoulders. Press your spine up to sit. And then we're going to sit. Uh, Cross-legged. So you can sit on a blanket, probably would be preferable for most of us. Cool. And we're gonna stay with this breath thing for a little bit because it'll help us with our meditation, but let's draw the soles of our feet together. And you can close your eyes because this is really freaking weird. So I don't know if you wanna look at me while you're doing this, but you're gonna close your eyes and you're gonna pull your heart and sternum forward. And that same breath that we were doing the whole time, I want you to breathe forward into your belly and back into your back. And then as you exhale, the right, the left, the front and the back of the pelvis come together and then they pull up. And you'll just do that about four more times. So inhaling into belly, into low back, and then exhale, everything's hugging into the midline and drawing up. And you're just noticing what this feels like happening here. Yep, last two breaths. Great. Last breath cycle here. Paying attention to the breath into the belly, into the low back. You might notice that it's now creeped a little further down. So you might now actually feel it more into the pelvis as you breathe in. Awesome. Cool. From here, you can start to open the gaze. Some of you might need to turn or angle just a little bit. We're gonna reach our right leg out towards the right, hug our left heel a little bit closer towards us. And the first thing that you'll wanna make sure is that your right leg is active. So the toes are pulling back to your knee, your knee is pulling up. And if you have your blocks, you might want to start to hinge forward. I'll get them. <laughs> hinge forward. And we're looking for a stretch on the inside edge of your right leg. So you adjust until you feel a stretch that's happening on the inside edge, back of right leg. And you might use the blocks, you might not. And I want you to, again, come back to breathing into your belly, breathing into your low back, and then you're exhaling, hugging everything together. That right leg is super active and you're breathing into the belly, you're breathing into the low back. You doing okay there, Barbara? Okay. Awesome. And you can choose to stay here or on your next exhale, you'll start to walk your hands back and you'll come back up to vertical. And then the next variation is to just take a side bend over that right leg. So maybe the right arm comes down on the inside edge of the right leg. Maybe you reach the left arm up and overhead. And again, wherever you are, you're hoping for sensation on the inside edge of the right thigh. You're breathing into your belly, into your low back, and you're exhaling, drawing energy out. So in particular, for those of us that said we were having lat stuff going on on the right side, we're gonna breathe in and see if we can really, sorry, left side, really breathe into the space between the ribs and the hips. And you might notice if you bend the elbow, it makes it heavier. And then does that intensify the sensation in a good way? Okay. Great. And then if you have done that side bend in Pavri to Janushirshasana, reach the left arm up as though someone's pulling you up, come back up to center, lower the left hand down, take a moment to pause in center before you move and just notice the difference between the sides. Once you feel like you've understood or get what's different between the sides, we'll go ahead and switch sides. So you'll bend the right knee, you'll extend the left leg long. 
And again, we wanna make sure that the left leg is active, toes are pulling up to the knee, knee is pulling up to the hip. And then you might just hinge forward and we're coming in between both legs. So we want there to be some type of pull lengthening happening on the inside edge of that left leg. And then again, you're breathing into the belly, you're breathing into the low back, you're noticing what that feels like. And as best as possible, keeping that left leg super active. Yep. And then are you breathing? Are you breathing? Breathing into belly, into low back, exhaling pelvic floor comes together and then up. It's almost like you're actually trying to pick up a tissue, sort of. Tissue, or elevator doors closing, whichever image works better for you. And if that feels good and happy, you might just stay there. Otherwise, on your next exhale, you'll start to walk your hands back, start to bring your spine up. And then you'll inhale, sweep the right arm up and take a little side bend over that left leg. And left elbow can come on the inside edge of your left leg. And then you'll notice what it feels like here. If you can keep rooting down into the right hip, keep breathing into the right side of the body. And as best as you can, keep the heart space open. And if you bend the top elbow, it just makes the elbow lever heavier for some crazy reason. And then that intensifies the sensation on the right side. And you're just breathing, keeping the right hip super anchored. Yep. You got two more breath cycles here. Deep breath. Awesome. There you go. And then when you're ready, you'll inhale, sweep the right arm up as though someone was pulling you up. You'll come up, you'll lower the hand down, take a moment to pause. And then we'll come back through center. Okay, now this is our last thing that we're gonna do. So I want you to sit well. I want you to fidget around however the heck you wanna do. We're gonna do some crazy breath work. I don't know, I liked it, I thought it was fun. Um, so we're gonna do some crazy breath work. So sit however you feel comfortable. And the first thing I do want you to do is just close your eyes a little bit. And it's not super crazy, it's just a variation of Nadi Shona, but it's a very specific variation of it. And so the first thing that you're gonna do is I want you to get comfortable. So if you need to fidget around, fidget around just for a little bit. And then we're gonna to start to find the weight of our body. So I want you to feel like you can feel the weight of your hips. See if you can feel the weight of your legs, the weight of your feet. And then we're gonna come back up. And so you're still feeling the weight of your feet. You're still feeling the weight of your knees, the weight of your legs, your weight of your hips. And then see if you can find the weight of your hands wherever they're touching. See if you can find the weight of the shoulders. See if you can find the weight of the jaw. See if you can find the lift of the spine, the lift of the crown, the lift of the ears. And then in all of this, come back to the belly. So as you inhale, you're breathing into the belly, you're breathing into the low back. You might feel your diaphragm descend. As you exhale, you're drawing the pelvic floor in and up. You might feel the diaphragm ascend. And as you continue to just pay attention to this, the movement of the diaphragm, the movement of the belly, you're going to allow yourself to again, to notice where you can be quiet. Where is the mind starting to chit chat at you? You'll start to notice where you can start to become still, where's the action or the impetus to move? And can you just allow yourself to breathe? And then again, you'll ask yourself, where can you do less? Where's the body tensing? Or maybe you can soften a little bit more, staying still upright through the spine, but just letting go, just a little bit of the unnecessary tension. And as some of that tension begins to dissolve, you might feel a little bit of, I don't know what you might feel, but it could be panic, fear, uncertainty, joy, whatever it is. But how can you allow yourself to trust that opening more? And so you are free to stay right here as you are and just continue to do this. The next little esoteric thing is I want you to bring your awareness to the top of your skull. 
and just go down about one inch. So you're inward in the inner brain and bring your awareness slightly forward behind your forehead. So as you inhale, the awareness travels from your nose through your nostrils up to that space. And as you exhale, the awareness travels from that space back through the nostrils out the nose. And so you're inhaling up the nostrils to that midbrain space. And you're exhaling and drawing the energy, the awareness back down. And again, you're noticing where you can soften any unnecessary tension in the body. Okay. You are free to stay here, just breathing in and out of the nose, drawing your awareness, your energy back towards your third eye center. Conversely, we'll take a variation of Nadi Shodhana and listen to this very closely. So you will inhale and exhale only through the left side and I'll guide you through it. We'll do that a few times and then you'll breathe in and out through both nostrils and then we'll repeat the same thing on the other side. So if you're staying with this, you stay here. If you'd like to take that Nadi Shodhana thing, you'll use your right hand, drawing the right thumb to the right nostril, left hand stays as it is, draw the ring finger and the pinky finger outside of the left nostril, keep both nostrils open, exhale out through both nostrils, inhale through both nostrils, close your right nostril and exhale through the left. When you breathe in, inhale through the left, drawing it up to that midbrain space and exhale back out through that nostril. And you'll do that three more times on your own. So you're inhaling, drawing the breath up. And you're exhaling, drawing the breath down. And you're inhaling, drawing the breath up. And you're exhaling, drawing the breath out. And you're inhaling, drawing it up. And exhaling, drawing it down. Listen closely. Inhale through that left nostril. As you exhale, lower your hand and exhale out through both nostrils. And then just take a moment to notice what you notice between the sides. So we're trying to balance our Ida and Pingala, our right and our left, or rather left and our right respectively, the masculine, the feminine, the solar, the lunar aspects of our being. And you're just noticing how this feels. And then when we're ready, we'll go ahead and try the other side. So that right hand comes back towards your face. Go ahead and inhale through both nostrils. As you exhale, close the right and exhale. Let's try the other side. You'll exhale out now through the right. And then you'll inhale just through the right. And then you'll exhale out just through the right. And then you'll inhale just through the right. And exhale out just through the right. You'll inhale back just through the right. And exhale out just through the right. And this last time you'll inhale and then release the hand and exhale through both nostrils. And you just take a moment to notice. Notice what you notice. How's the body? How's the mind? How's the energy? Okay. We'll take two more breath cycles as you are here. And then for today, I'd like you to slowly crawl back to the position that you started in. So for many of us, that'll be na krasana. If you started seated, we can bring ourselves into supported lung bench. So you're gonna take the opportunity to set yourselves up so that we feel able Does that feel stable? Yeah. Okay. Okay, and those that are back in the krasana, the invitation is again to come back to the belly. 
I want you to breathe into the belly and breathe into the low back. And for this one, I'm gonna give you about a minute and a half to stay here. But if you wanna stay here longer before we finish up our practice, you are free to do that. But I want you to just stay here. And you're just breathing and you're noticing what you notice. So we did things today that from a physical perspective were very tantric in nature. We were focusing really on the energy by focusing really on the breath. So some of the shapes in some ways might have seemed the same. They might have seemed different. They might have seemed easier or harder. The only thing that matters right now is what's going on in that belly. And you press the belly into the floor and you notice how that creates space in the low back. And then again, once you feel like you're pretty established in the breath, can you make it smoother? Meaning the beginning and the end of the inhalation are as seamless as a piece of nice silk. And the beginning and the end of the exhalation are smooth and even. And then for this variation, I want you to see how quiet you can make your breath. So it becomes smooth and seamless when it becomes as quiet as possible. And then the last thing, can you connect it so it never stops? So the in-breath naturally becomes the out-breath, the out-breath naturally becomes the in-breath and you never notice the transition between the two. Now at this point, if you're pretty happy as a clam here, exploring what's going on in your breath, by all means, please hang out here. If there's anything else that feels like it's calling you before you wanna make your way to a more traditional Shavasana, by all means, start to do that. All right. So as it looks like we're probably gonna stay here, we'll give you the last little thing. I want you to bring your awareness to your low back and bring it to your toes. As you inhale, draw energy from the toes up to your belly, up to your low back. And as you exhale, draw the energy from the pelvis back down through the legs, back down through the feet. And you'll just repeat that. Repeat this Kriya, this energizing technique as many times as you want. And the inhalation is drawing in nurturance support, love, guidance, whatever it is you feel like you need. And the exhale is letting go of toxins or fear or resistance, whatever you wanna let go of. And you'll just stay here just like this for a few more minutes and I'll let you know when it's time to come out.
Return your awareness to your breath. As you come back to your breath, just take a moment to check in. Those that are on your abdomen, just slowly lift your head, plant your hands on the mat, and then maybe press yourself back to a child's pose before slowly making your way up to sit. Those that are in another position will slowly find your way over perhaps to one of your sides before you draw yourself up to sit. Wherever you are, you're just taking a moment, taking a few breaths. And then when you feel like you're pretty ready, you'll draw yourself to a tall, comfortable seat. And still with the gaze either inward or the eyes closed, we'll bring one hand to the heart and one hand to the belly. And then you just take a moment to connect once again. So no matter what may be going on in your life, no matter what transitions that are in the process of evolving, I think they're all part of our continual journey. Just like that breath, it can become a seamless experience. What we need to remind ourselves is that we can allow ourselves the opportunity to become quiet and still and to do less so we can trust more into that opportunity that is always unfolding through every moment, through every breath, every situation and every relationship. We'll go ahead and complete our collective practice with a collective breath followed by a collective ohm. So go ahead and draw your hands to heart center. Press the palms into each other, receive the weight of your thumbs into your sternum and lift your heart towards your hands. Gently exhale all the breath from your mouth. Take a big breath in. Audible breath out. Inhale for Om. Join if you'd like. to that light, to that breath, and to that transition. We bow. Namaste.